Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we create photorealistic assets together. So for today's video, I want to talk about how you can add some surface detail to your asset to increase the realism of the asset. And the kind of surface detail I want to talk about in this video is for the sculpting stage. Whenever I model my own asset, I find that if I just put in a little extra work in my modeling stage and adding nice uh, surface detail, my texturing process become a lot easier. Basically, there will be a lot more interesting detail to bake maps with, to work with in the texturing stage. So a little bit of background about this project I'm working on. I guess I had a lot of fun designing and sculpting last time. I kind of just want to keep this going. And yes, that is the same face. I mean, we're using the same face again. Hopefully this is the last time you guys will see this face again. Like I mentioned before, I enjoy design uh, things around the female character. So I'm reusing the same face again because for this asset, the face itself is not really the point. It's really about the design of everything. So for the concept of this piece, I do have a main inspiration from this artist Renja. And I really like this drawing of his. So I use it as a main inspiration. Of course, I've done, I've gone off the concept itself and done a lot of my own design as well. And for the final look, the final render and texturing, um, I'm following this other artist. Uh, this is a Spanish sculptor. He does this kind of mixed media wood and metal sculptures, which I thought was super cool because they're real life objects and they have so much interesting texturing detail. So this is the final look that I'm kind of going for. Actually, for anybody that's looking to do a demo reel for texturing, this kind of real life object is a really good example to follow. Um, the color, the, the texture itself is super interesting and it definitely shows off your texturing skills if you can mimic something like this really well. This actually leads into the main subject of this video is compared to this final look that I'm going for versus what I have so far with my sculpting, can you tell the main difference and why my current sculpt is not going to cut it? My sculpt currently is lacking that fine surface detail that I will need to describe the material. In this case, we have some very corroded metal with very interesting colors, but also very interesting fine surface details. This last layer of surface detail is extremely important if you want to do something that's realistic. For my scalp currently, if I don't add that last layer of material details, I will end up with something that's a little bit more stylized. Another reason why you want to have those fine surface detail for your sculpt is that it will show the scale of the object. Right now, looking at this sculpt, it could be as small as a pendant or as huge as a giant statue in the middle of the street. But if I can add this type of material detail on top, it will be easier for me to describe the actual size of the object. I will show you two ways to add surface detail. There are a lot more ways out there for you to discover. These are just the two ways that I use most often. The first way I like to do it, which I have used for years, is to actually bring my high resolution mesh into Mobox and add my details there. The reason why I like Mobox is because of the layer system. I find that it's a little bit more intuitive compared to ZBrush and it feels a little bit more like Mari, like Photoshop, so it was just easier for me. So to do that, I'm going to export the highest level of one of these subtools. I'm going to use the horn-like shape as an example. I'm gonna turn a group off and export. Going to save it somewhere that I can find later. Now in Mapbox, I'm going to import the object. It's pretty large, so we have to wait for a little bit. Here's our object. If I go to layer tab, you can add the new layer on the object and I'm going to name it detail one. 
We can essentially add as many layers as we like. I'm going to use the foamy brush. I found that this is the great brush for adding surface detail because while I'm adding the detail, it does not change the shape of the object. I'm going to the stencil tab and I can just double click on any of those images to bring out the stencil function. On the right side of the screen, you can see some attributes for the stencil. There are some adjustments you can do. And if I click on the brush itself, there is some adjustments for the brush as well. Uh, while you are projecting the image, you might need to either adjust the stencil itself or maybe the brush itself. They both have an invert function. You can actually invert the value of the stencil to get a different effect. To manipulate the stencil, you use S middle click to move it around, S right click to scale, and S left click to rotate. If I'm liking this area of the stem cell for my object, all I need to do is just to start to sculpt through the stem cell and you will see the detail is being projected on the object. While you are pressing, the stem cell itself is going to disappear so you have a better view of what you're doing. As you can see, while those details are being created, the shape of the object doesn't really change, which is great because all we need to do is just to add surface details. Um, you ha do have to make sure that your object has enough resolution. I think this object right now is 3 to 4 million polygon, and that was enough for me to project this level of detail. The size of the detail you choose to project will showcase the size of the object. So for me, I want something, maybe her face is the same size of a real human face. So the scale I'm using is going to be very close to the final reference I'm using, like the life-size sculpture. With everything being sculpted on the layer, you can always change the intensity of the layer. Like right now, I just change it to 50% if you don't want this layer of detail to be too strong. And I can add another layer. I'm going to name it Detail 2 and put some other type of detail on top. This way, you can actually organize different type of detail on different layers and adjust their intensity as you wish. For example, I'm going to project this metal floor detail, which is not really something I want to put on my statue, but just for example, on a different layer. And what I'm sculpting right now on this layer will not affect any other layer. This is why I like to do this in Mobbox, and uh, if you're more comfortable with ZBrush, you can use that as well. There is another way to add some general noise inside of ZBrush as well. So I'm going to the Surface tab. And if I go to Lightbox Noise, there is actually quite a few preset noise that you can use for your object. If I choose this one, I can go to Edit and adjust the intensity, scale, and a few different things to get the look I like. It's definitely a little bit too strong, and also I can increase the tiling of the noise to get some general breakup for my object. So once I click OK, this noise is actually not on the mesh yet. I have to click Apply to Mesh. But before that, I'm going to create a new layer to make sure all those details are on its own layer, so I still have the flexibility to adjust it. And now if I go to Apply to Mesh, and this is what it looks like. Of course, this way is less flexible and uh, customized for my mesh. I know I only introduced those two ways to do this, but there are probably a hundreds of ways of doing this, so many different ways inside ZBrush as well. So you should do your own research and see which way works the best for you. For this video, I mostly just want to emphasize how important it is to have a good surface detail for your object if you aim to create something that's more photorealistic. For the next video, I want to start texturing this object. I think it's going to be super fun and I will show you what I learned in the process. That is everything I have for you today. I hope it was helpful and I will see you in the next one.